Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. You join us on the WWE and NXT save with our latest takeover, the event that happens in February, which normally, as you can see, would be in Portland, Oregon. We're certainly not there. I think we're in Cincinnati. I believe that's where I put it. We're looking to have a good show here. Obviously, this will build up a lot towards the WrestleMania weekend takeover and hopefully something that will really showcase how good we've made NXT, so when you think about it, with this show, we've got Elimination Chamber, the next takeover, and then we're at WrestleMania, that's quite bad, we're going to be two WrestleManias down already in this save. But I've decided going forward as well for my events, I'm going to be a lot more into the likes of using bands, using celebrities, and using money on a special set, let's really try and push these show ratings up, because I want to try and get as many of these accomplishments that we can. I've got a wee watcher in the go, probably should have made it a, a one of it's not getting as much data in it because it's it's struggling to get to 25 years, never mind 50 years, so I might actually complete this at one point in 2021, but um, I'm at 23 years in it recording, so close to getting that next achievement. I probably should have just went for the, the, the mod that's in 1930, that's uh, the organic mod, and that would have been quite rapid, but hey, that is what it is, and I'm hoping just to take that off the list and then focus primarily on getting those 100 rated matches and shows. On to the matter of hand though, last year we got a 76 rated show with 19,000 in our attendance. We're speculated to get about 39,000 here so I'm looking forward to that. We should smash that attendance. And the show last year was main evented with the Velveteen Dream defending against Karrion Cross. In fact if you look at it, Velveteen Dream, Karrion Cross, Bianca Belair and Tessa Blanchard all on the main roster now and uh, the only person who will, Ricochet has already been back in NXT for a year Jake Atlas and Jordan Devlin in that triple threat match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship of the World which will be one of many titles defended on tonight's show We won't have the Women's Championship in action, we'll explain that in the, the show why that's taking place but as always, thank you for tuning in, it's much appreciated. You know what you want to do if you want to get social, want to get the game, etc. Everything you need, the best sources are in the description below. I think it's time for some NXT TakeOver. Let's jump right in. So I've turned out with 34,150 in Great American Ballpark. So not quite as many as I was hoping for. I was hoping we would smash that 39,000. But still, 15,000 more than last year. Just shows that the gain we've had as a, a company. Obviously we've benefited from some main roster guys coming down and obviously getting their overness up, their popularity up and obviously just having good matches. But at the end of the day we've lost so many people as well at the main roster and we can just thank everybody for their the progress of the company. So normally in any TV show, whether it be Raw, Smackdown or NXT, I use the hype sports entertainment angle. I don't feel that's really appropriate when it comes to pay per view, so we are using the hype self promotion of the two guys, so we open the show with Chad Gable and Sami Zayn, your usual build up to a pay per view, you know you get that wee hype video to start away, Chad Gable saying why he's going to retain the NXT Championship and Sami Zayn saying last time he was NXT Champion, you know that was brutally cut short very very quickly by a friend that stabbed him in the back, this time he is going to be the man that's going to end Chad Gable's reign and he's going to become the new NXT Champion, so a 67 rating for that one. That is your main event for tonight. Opening contest for the ye uh, for the, the match, or for the show, if I can get words out there. It was about to have a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling as we had Ricky Starks defeat the returning to NXT Cedric Alexander in 11.55 with the Buster Keaton. Just a 39, unfortunately the crowd were turned off because they don't particularly feel any of these guys are over. But... That's the reason why Cedric's come back to NXT, to get him some victories down the line, obviously. I want to get Ricky Starks over first, and then Cedric down the line. So I felt like it was a good showcase match. It's just a bit frustrating that both guys don't really benefit from it. So, some okay performances, it cools the crowd a little bit. We'll get them back. Good win for Ricky Starks. Moving on to the tag team division. And it was about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. And we had the Lucha Brothers. Ray Phoenix and Pentagon defeating Catchpoint, Tracy Williams and Drew Gulak in 14.02 when Pentagon Jr. pinned Drew Gulak 
with a top rope styles clash. This was the third defence of the NXT tag titles for the Lucha Bros. Until I can confidently call them up to the main roster, quite happy to keep the belts on them. Probably would have gained higher than a 75 if we had the crowd hot at this point. But overall happy with that and Phoenix benefits. From a hot new move, but overall some good work on NXT. Backstage after this matchup, obviously after he's had time to recover, etc. Ricky Starks just says, You've witnessed some of marvellous Ricky Starks and just how good I am. Keep an eye on me, look out for my name, because I am going places in NXT. So a little arrogant promo from Ricky Starks, giving him some good TV time or WWE Network time, because obviously that's where our show's on. So that was a 41 promo from Ricky Starks. Next up with the Women's Tag Team Championships, and it was a bout that had a decent reaction from the crowd and subpar wrestling. Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter defeated Ember Moon and Natalia in 12-18 when Casey pinned Ember Moon. That is the sixth defence of the NXT Women's Championships for them. A 48 rated matchup. Obviously Natalia's pretty much player coach. Ember's just I can't really find anything for her on the main roster, and I know she's really, really talented, so. I'm hoping with the skill set that she's got, she can help put the other ladies over. So a good win for them is obviously try to get as much prestige to the NXT Women's Tag Team titles and the two heels pick up the victory here. Moving along, we've got a promo from Jessica Mia. And it's just her saying, every week on NXT television, you can witness the Jessie Show. So it's some of them, I'm trying to get her back to her Jessie Show gimmick. We're just going to keep giving her promos and promos building her up and it's just cool to give her that wee spotlight on pay-per-view to let people know who she is, what she's about and that's a 27 rated segment. Moving along we had the North American Championship match and it was a good matchup that saw Sammy Callahan defeat Pete Dunne in 14.38 with an assault driver following interference from Casey Canzano. It was the second defence of the North American title a very good 74 rated matchup, both guys doing well, done back in NXT after a, a pretty unsuccessful run on Raw, but a good matchup there, and Callahan picks up the win, thanks to Catanzaro. And of course the reason for this is of course because they're a faction, this is the Trinity, Jimmy Jacobs leads the way with Sammy Callahan, Catanzaro and Caden Carter, and he just says look at the success that Trinity has assembled together, we have your North American champion, and we have the women's NXT Tag Team Champions chips. We are going places and just be warned that we are here to stay. But it's just a case of putting them with somebody that can talk very well. And I know Sammy's extremely talented and I'm just hoping that the overness and the skill set can, can rub off on Catanzaro and Carter as we try and push them forward to a very successful women's division down the line. Not only in the main roster but of course NXT. So 46, Callahan was fantastic, Caden Carter looking a bit stale, so might need to sort her gimmick. Moving along, promo from Isaiah Scott, 45 rated promo, defending his Cruiserweight Championship tonight, and he just says, I've had some great matches in NXT, but yo, this man was just a jobber on the main roster, he thinks he can come to NXT and get a, a, a championship match. Put this joker in his place. And that matchup was decent. Isaiah Scott defends and defeats Kalisto in 1337 with a handspring back elbow. Isaiah Scott makes the third defence of the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. So 67, good performance from Scott there, a 68. It's just people that I don't have anything for in the main roster, but I know they're extremely talented. Get them back to the NXT, we can either relaunch their career or they can have some kick-ass matches. So good match there, Isaiah Scott, still a Cruiserweight Champion. Next up, one of our academy graduates, Lance Truman, that's his actual name in game. And I just felt like, yeah, we'll just promote him over. He's got very, very good charisma. And I can use the name and have the Truman Show. So it's just him saying, every week on NXT television, you can witness one of the greatest future technical wrestlers in the world. I think he's technical, it's really good. And one of the most handsome and one of the most charismatic, myself, Lance Truman. And welcome to the Truman Show. Complete rip-off of the Jim Carrey film, but he's getting better his gimmick. And that was a 26 rated segment. These kind of people like him, Jesse Kimia, will probably more have matches after WrestleMania weekend, once obviously make the adjustments of main roster 
and uh, guys coming here, guys and girls coming here, and, and vice versa. To there. We have Triple H cut a promo, our user character, 75 rated promo. Uh, I've been cutting it on um, NXT television, but just to make everyone aware, um, how sure Dana Brooke suffered an injury. The injury is ruled her out of tonight. She should be back just in time. I'm really, really hoping just in time for NXT, uh, the WrestleMania weekend, NXT, I think it's like 40 odd days, but my worry is obviously it judges, um, obviously a month is 28 days, which means 16 days is obviously, well, it's more than two weeks, so obviously it's six weeks until that takeover but we'll check after the show just how close it is if I might need to make a change of plan if it comes to worse we'll just have an interim champion but fatal four way for the NXT Women Championship number one contendership and a, ma a decent matchup with Thunder Rosa defeat Indy Hartwell, Nicole Matthews and Siri in 15-28 when Thunder Rosa pinned Indy Hartwell with La Rosa a 62, not gonna lie I was absolutely impressed with her on uh, All Out, so just went, yeah, we're pushing her. It gives us another good heel in this division. Nicole Matthews has been very, very good. Siri was one of her big pushes, coming off the back of the, the Mae Young Classic. And he's a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit fortunate to be here uh, in singles competition. Obviously, she was teamed up with Diona Peruzzo. Uh, Diona did suffer an ACL injury. She is back in four months after a successful surgery. But a good opportunity to give Indy some um, solo experience and uh, a good contest there for all four ladies involved. Uh, a 62, very good. And should Dana Brooke make it back, it'll be Dana Brooke versus Thunder Rosa. If not, we'll just crown an interim champion. And it's just a, a title belt I'll bring in and then just retire after one show, basically. Next up, we've got a promo from the winners of the Dusty Cup, the ever-impressive Ace Austin, and at the moment, still called Baba Tunde. If he goes to the main roster, I may change him to, is it Baba Kato or whatever they've called him. I'll sort it out after, if we decide to go to the main roster. 61 promo here, Ace can usually nail about an 80 on his own, so obviously Baba Tunde's not the most over in the mic, but that's why he's paired with Ace Austin, to try and carry him along in ring and off, out the ring as well. And they're hyping the match up against Ricochet and Cesaro. And it's just a case of Ace Austin saying these old jokers getting in the way. And the future of this company and so is Big Baba Tunde. The match itself was good. As the Ace and the Beast, Ace Austin and Baba Tunde defeat Ricochet and Cesaro in 15.05 when Baba Tunde pinned Ricochet with a spear. 61 for Cesaro, big physical decline. Ricochet and Ace Austin, phenomenal performances. Baba Tunde with a 55. His overness is getting close to 60, so he is quite close to the main roster. Ace is just a case of he could go main roster at any point, but I don't want to push him, and he's just another guy there when he can be one of the top guys in NXT. Then, after the matchup, some more Joe is in NXT, and he just says to Ricochet, You're a marked man. I'm here to just, you know, destroy people like I did before. And I've identified you as someone I feel that I can use as a marker and I absolutely choke the hell out. So a 57. A bit disappointed he's got a gimmick that's getting stale since he's just come down for the main roster. So that obviously still applies. So we'll repackage him after this. We'll give him some good matches in NXT television. And may as well just confirm because obviously the next NXT show, NXT show will be uh, take the next takeover. We will have some more Joe versus Ricochet at that event but we'll we'll give an idea of probably four of the matches that are gonna happen there because I say we don't really have any other NXT shows until then. And next up main event superb matchup Chad Gable defeats Sami Zayn in twenty five fifty one by pinfall meaning that Chad Gable makes the fourth defence of the NXT championship. So a seventy nine here, eighty two performance from Chad, just a sixty eight for Sammy. He does seem to have a bit of a He's either not like a big decline or he's just, yeah, not as been given as good attributes. But Gable has just been a monster here and quite happy to keep him as NXT champion. And I finished the show. Well, do you remember on one of our pay per views we had that Loser Leaves Raw match? Kevin Owens back to NXT and he beats the hell out of Sami Zayn. So, uh, 
returned from a long, long time ago when they done it on NXT television, but KO obviously fired from Raw, and he's down in NXT, and he has got his uh, eyes set, his mind is set, his eyes are set, everything is set on Sami Zayn, and that's a 77. So overall, the show drew an 82, which increased their pop in 56 regions. Obviously, as you can tell, nowhere near anything was near an 82, and that is your benefit of using the various stuff. Um, and all the money gets uh, absorbed by the WWE anyway, so I'm quite happy to give NXT all that stuff. If it gets them bigger, more exposure for them, and at the same time, that will help our development talents be more ready for the main roster. So just to confirm... Um, a few matches that are going to be taking place at NXT WrestleMania weekend. We are going to see Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. I think that's going to be superb. I'm absolutely looking forward to that one. Thunder Rosa should be facing Dana Brooke pending injury. We'll double check that. Samoa Joe is going to take on Ricochet. And we are going to have Chad Gable defend the NXT Championship versus Ace Austin. I'm looking forward to that one. Unsure if this one's definitely going to happen, but I might be looking at Jay Lethal and Sammy Callahan. So it should be a stack show. That one's not confirmed, but that is maybe where I'm going. And obviously we'll try and give a big showcase matchup to the big man, Babatunde. So we'll take a look into the main screen, see if anything's popped up that really affects us. And... Uh, yeah, see if there was any winners or losers from the, the big event. And yeah, if, if Dana Brooks actually going to make that show. So if I make it right, 20 and 15 is 43 days until... Is that right? That can't be right. The less than two weeks to take over, actually. So it'd be 13 days plus 28. 41 days to the next takeover. Just a house show in the main roster, so that's fine. As obviously we're getting ready for a pay-per-view tonight, which will be your next video. And NXT... 6.4 million views. Good stuff. Financially. 10 million paid. Broadcast revenue was not great. Sponsorship, well, obviously that's still got plenty of time. Uh, well, to be fair, broadcast revenue still got two weeks of... Um, television so I wouldn't say that's too horrible all that money goes to the main roster anyway Mustafa Ali has been body shaming Kevin Steen can we please stop always body shaming Kevin Steen in this game and let's take a wee look 40 days so she's definitely gonna be back just in time probably the day before with her spinal disalignment it could give her surgery, but the high risk means it could really affect her, and I want to try and push her as much as we can. Of course, Diana, with a torn ACL, is out for three months. So that is the state of play of NXT. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you join us for the next episode, which is WWE Elimination Chamber. And this one, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, because that's going to set up a lot of things for WrestleMania. So cheers again, take it easy, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.